Monet's most famous paintings. In this video, we will see the best works of art by Claude Monet, the most important Impressionist painter in the world. Camille with a puppy painting. Work of Claude Monet of the year 1866. The inventor of Impressionism, Claude Monet, painted his wife Camille Dantieu countless times. Here they were still lovers, and at that time, the painter was very poor. He couldn't even buy paintings, but instead he did wear the best silk shirts and party with his friends. Camille's relationship with the artist dates back to 1864, marrying in 1870, although they already had a son named Jean. Monet's way of life did little to help the family's financial stability, but despite the occasional infidelity and a notorious abandonment of the home, he only painted her. Monet made more than 50 portraits of his wife, like this one, in which the industriousness of the woman's face contrasts with the thick brushstrokes of the dog. With this he came to say that she was the relevant pictorial subject. The Magpie Painting Claude Monet's work from 1869. In these times Impressionism did not exist, nor was it expected. But inside Monet something was already growing. I began to see how in nature each instant left and a totally new one arrived. The light was different in 10 seconds. The colors too. He decided that, as an artist, it was his duty to safeguard, to document each fleeting moment as something unique and unrepeatable. In the whiteness of the snow, this perhaps looked better. Light creates infinitely different shades of white at every moment, so to capture this, Monet combined brush strokes, giving birth to this kind of impressionist proto-landscape, a movement that would hatch five years later precisely at the hands of Monet himself and that would be characterized by, as in this painting, painting outdoors to capture the beauty of the landscape and above all the ephemeral nature of its light. White and its different varieties dominate everything here. The only difference is that black magpie perched on that wooden closure, like a note in a sheet music, and for this reason this bird is the visual center of the painting, where our gaze takes us when observing it and the protagonist of it. Even in the title. After all, he is the only living thing on the scene. Of course, this painting without a human figure was not liked at all in the official Paris salon of that year. Impression, Sunrise Painting Claude Monet's work from the year 1872. Monet painted it and with it he revolutionized the history of art. Impressionism was born. Taking into account that if you were a painter in France, you could only exhibit at the Paris Salon, it is normal that the Salon of the Rejected was created, where art could continue its course far from the stiffness of the Academy. In the year 1874, some 3,500 people attended the first Impressionist exhibition and their jaws dropped. Everything was too modern. The authors quickly borrowed this criticism to baptize the new movement, which, as we know, would end up becoming academic itself over time. Monet would become the leader of the new painting. The brushstrokes here are unheard of, free, fast and direct. The apparently spontaneous composition allows the forms to disappear almost completely. It was so modern that young artists began to paint like this. They grew long beards, went outside to paint and made light the main subject of the painting. The Poppy Field Painting Work of Claude Monet of the year 1873 These flowers were often protagonists in Monet's work. The French painter who started Impressionism shows his surroundings in each painting, insisting and often repeating the same motifs. He did so during almost all his work, but especially in one of his most creative periods, and in which this painting is located, in the happy period of Argenteuil. Argenteuil is a French city near Paris, where Monet settled in 1871. He lived there for seven years, which were of great artistic fruitfulness, both for him and for his Impressionist colleagues. The landscapes of this region offer a variety of perfect settings to capture a magical light that will translate into the most beautiful colors of the palette. The light of nature is the boss in Monet's work. The painting lacks a complicated artistic composition. As a good impressionist, he loads the brush with a lot of ink, in fact, 
if we make an effort we can pick a poppy from the field. He paints the landscape with curved lines, which gives the painting a fluid and undulating appearance. Leaving behind theoretical concerns, he captures the simplicity of a field of poppies where tranquility reigns. In fact, he does not bother detailing the faces of those who are possibly his wife Camille and his son Jean. They are a pretext in the play. The landscape catches the eye, and it can take up to a few minutes for us to realize that there is another couple in the frame. What is truly important is the light, the light projected on each flower in the field, on each cloud displaced by the wind, or on the house perfectly hidden among the trees. Even if we spend a lot of time watching the work, we can imagine how the clouds are moving, or how Camille and Jean return home. This is due to Monet's wonderful technique, beyond a simple canvas, he makes a slow motion impression, stopping the time of the fields of Argentine. La Japonaise Painting Claude Monet's work from 1876 The 70s Everything Japanese sweeps the heart of Western culture, which was Paris at the time. In 1867, the presence of Japan at the Universal Exhibition in Paris caused a furor and art objects and ceramics became another element of Parisian fashion. Of course, that affected the art. The Impressionists in particular saw Japanese art as the way forward and one of its greatest representatives, Claude Monet, also fell for the freedom in the use of color, the unusual perspectives and the themes that went against everything tolerated by art. Academic In 1876, he presented this work to the Salon in which he represents his wife Camille dressed in a highly detailed red kimono and holding a fan. It is strange that she was depicted as blonde, as we know from other works, by the artist that Camille was brunette. He is wearing a wig perhaps to underline that, despite the influence of the rising sun, we are dealing with a western work of art. In addition to the fan in his hand, Monet paints many other fans in the background to give the painting a more oriental flavor. Monet would sell this work for the not inconsiderable sum of 2,000 francs, although over time he would deny the work, considering it an embarrassment in his production. The Montorgueil Street Painting Claude Monet's work from 1878 This painting is a constellation of white fires, reds, blues. Monet tells that the day he made this work, June 30, 1878, he was walking down Rue Montorgueil in the middle of the national celebration. As he walked, he saw a balcony, went up, he asked permission to paint on it, they granted it. He extracted his materials, settled in, and painted. Then he returned to the street with the canvas still fresh, when the image had not yet fixed on the support, Monet walked and the colors were immortalized. In other words, it is possible that Monet himself is one of the passers-by that appears in the painting, a walker under a constellation of fires. A painting almost always has two stories. Perhaps that is why Montorgueil Street draws so much attention, because there is no second story in it. There is only fire. Monet captures the exact moment when the celebration reaches its highest point, not for nothing at the zenith, instead of the sun, a flag crowns the sky. Ecstasy does not have a second narrative because while it happens, whoever experiences it is not aware of the moment in which it will vanish to become the sediment on which nostalgia nests. By the way, it is noteworthy how due to the fervor of the festival, the street, like all the other figures, loses its straightness and undulates in the heat of happiness. Montorgueil Street is a dance made up of miniature fires. Cliffs of Etretat, Sunset Painting Claude Monet's work from 1885 The father of Impressionism returns to paint another of his landscapes, this time the spectacular Cliff of Etretat in Normandy. And he does it at sunset. Something that characterized the painter was his obsession with changes in light in the same place, which radically varied his palette. Choosing a motif and repeating it with different light focusing on it, make Monet a kind of serial painter, and a very prolific one. Another thing that the artist had was his love for water, or rather the reflection of light on it. No painter was as purely impressionist as Monet. Based on spots of pure color, he manages not only to capture the light of that very moment, but also to reproduce the moment itself. Of course, impressionist that he was, he painted outdoors. 
his studio was the here and now. Outdoors, under direct light, he was able to almost immediately observe and capture the changes in light and its vibrations. Hence the vitality and harmony of Monet's painting. Belle Isle, Rain Effect Painting Claude Monet's work from 1886 I am in a country of beautiful savagery, a tremendous pile of rocks and an incredible sea of colors, I am very enthusiastic, despite the fact that it is difficult for me, since I was used to painting the English Channel and by force I had my routine, but the ocean is something different. This was written by Claude Monet to Gustave Kaelbot during his visit to Belle Isle, the largest of the Breton Islands. In an attempt by the French artist to confront different and more challenging landscapes, he resided there from September 12 to November 25, 1886. At first, the painter found himself disconcerted by untamed nature, unstable weather, and great difficulty in accessing to the areas that most attracted him. But neither the cliffs nor the precipices were enough to stop Monet, and so he gives us the painting Belle Isle, Rain Effect. This painting makes you feel in each part of the body the sensations that one has when facing the open sea in a storm, the wind that moves the body involuntarily, the rain that hits gently but evenly on the face, the cold that penetrates deep into the bones. It looks like a scene from a period film, where the protagonists raise existential questions while observing the landscape in front of them. The size of the frame allows us to obtain a greater breadth of the battle that takes place between the rocks and the sea, leaving little room for the sky. In this painting, Monet gives us the marine atmosphere to perfection, with intense colors, blues, greens, lilacs, whites, which merge with wide, round brushstrokes and commas that shake as much as the landscape we observe. Monet extended his stay on the island to be able to paint the changing effect of the light on the coast, and we can say that he succeeded. We know that his painting is painting, but he manages to convince us that it is water, and that we are standing next to his easel. Rouen Cathedral Series Works by Claude Monet between the years 1892 and 1894 The Rouen Cathedral Series is a collection of 30 paintings by Claude Monet mainly depicting views of the west portal of Notre Dame Cathedral in Rouen. And although they represent the same thing, each painting is very different, since it shows different times of the day, different seasons of the year, different weather, which causes a total change in light that causes a total change in color and in the perception of things. The cathedral, therefore, is not important. The important thing here is the light, the atmosphere, that ephemeral moment that will never be repeated. And capturing light is almost impossible, let's say mystical, due to its ever-changing nature and extreme subtlety. Perhaps that is why Monet painted so many pictures of the same thing, trying to find what he was looking for over and over again. Things don't progress steadily, mainly because every day, I discover something that I hadn't seen the day before. In the end, I'm trying to do the impossible. We can see how Monet does not skimp on painting and makes paintings full of matter, as if trying to capture the solidity of that cathedral that has been standing for centuries, and on the other hand the ethereal subtlety of the changes in light. Monet painted this series of paintings between the years 1892 and 1894. Charing Cross Bridge Painting Claude Monet's work from 1899 I'm colorblind, I don't see anything here. Said one of the visitors to the Tyson Museum when seeing this painting by Claude Monet. And it is that these barges that cross the river under the Charing Cross Bridge, or those silhouettes of the Houses of Parliament are built brushstroke by brushstroke with various shades of blue. The canvas belongs to a series of studies of views of the Thames that the Impressionist painter made on his trips to London between 1899 and 1904. Apparently Monet preferred to go to London in winter, in London, what I love most is undoubtedly the mist. Well, it shows. If you can't see the color blue, as this poor man was, you're missing out on what Monet wanted to convey, light filtered through winter mist and the atmospheric conditions of the city translated as faithfully as possible onto a canvas. For a person with normal eyesight it is difficult to see the motifs that almost vanish into space, but the truth is that the winter atmosphere built with cold colors remains intact that if they were not so blue we could confuse them with the darkness of twilight on that afternoon. 
Thick London Fog A wonder that unfortunately some colorblind people cannot enjoy. Twilight, Venice Painting Work of Claude Monet, from the year 1908 In the fall of 1908, at the age of 68, Monet finally traveled to Venice. There he painted 37 paintings, depicting various views of the city. Before going, Monet suspected that Venice was the typical tourist rabbit hole, crowded with peasants, which was also already more seen than the comic in painting. But when he got there, the Impressionist was automatically caught up in the energy of the city and understood why so many artists represented it. He fell in love. Monuments and water. That was what Monet liked to paint the most. And in Venice, both concepts merged. Monet spent the day painting, despite the autumn cold and humidity of those canals. As soon as the sun rose, he would get to work with enthusiasm and joy. He would go to St. Mark's Square or paint from his hotel room, set up his easel on the edge of the Grand Canal, or even get on a gondola to capture the moment. It was almost as if more than painting, Monet wanted to photograph the city to keep a memory, like this wonderful sunset. Some postcards from Venice. His wife Alice, who was his second wife of the painter, after becoming a widower of the first, who traveled with him, saw him full of ardor, and doing such beautiful things, besides, Monet put aside for a moment those happy water lilies that had haunted him for years. The Water Lilies Painting Claude Monet's work from 1926 there are approximately 250 paintings of water lilies, painted by Monet, in the last years of his life. The elderly painter lived in the Garden of Giverny, where he installed a Japanese bridge and a pond with exotic plants that would serve as a model and inspiration. Monet was already consecrated, but he continued to investigate the pictorial possibilities of the color variations of the same subject, depending on the hours of the day or the seasons of the year. In these last works, the forms are practically dissolved in stains of color. Many art historians claim that when Monet suffered from cataracts, the artist saw through a blurry, yellowish filter. In fact, after undergoing surgery, he returned to his previous style for a season. Of all the series of water lilies, perhaps the most famous and spectacular are the panels that are exhibited in the Musée de la Orangerie de Tilleries, in Paris. Monet painted them to be exhibited in a 360-degree circular room and they are considered the Sistine Chapel of Impressionism. But another work that draws attention is this. A huge canvas, 2 meters high, by 6 wide. In it, we only see water, plants and the reflection of the outside. Monet immerses us in the middle of this strange landscape of reds, yellows and mauve. He stuns us with the breathtaking beauty and harmony of his canvases. The work as a whole seems unreal. Up close it's pure abstract art. By far, they are indeed the most perfect water lilies ever painted. That was all for today's video, tell us what you thought, and if you liked it, please give us your subscription and your like, this way you support the art community on YouTube. Until the next video, have a nice day.